diaspora voting the imperative for constitutional reform. I spoke to this uh, theme on May the 1st, 2024 at a forum, an online forum uh, organized by hashtag fix politics diaspora. And um, because I didn't have enough time to really talk about everything I wanted in the seven minutes allotted, I want to do my whole presentation. What is diaspora? I'm using the definition provided by Abba Amsami El Guja in his paper, Paving the Way for Entrenching the Diaspora's Voting Rights under the Nigerian Laws, Legal Prospects, Challenges, and Potential Solutions. The presentation that I'm making also draws extensively on El Guja's analysis. Um, El Guja tells us that the United Nations International Organization for Migration, IOM, defines the term diaspora as follows. Migrants or descendants of migrants whose identity and sense of belonging have been shaped by their migration experience and background. They maintain links with their homelands and with each, to each other based on a shared sense of history, identity, or mutual experiences in the destination country. Therefore, for the purposes of this discussion, the term diaspora is used to loosely describe those who identify with a homeland or live outside of it, including the first generation immigrants and their foreign born children, as long as they maintain some cultural, linguistic, historical, religious, or affective link to their home country. The Nigerian diaspora is recognized as having made or still making huge remittances home. Nigeria's economy is largest in Africa, and it's the 39th largest globally by nominal GDP. The 2023 GDP is estimated as uh, at 2.113 trillion GDP per capita was $2.33,000 in 2022. Nigeria received $20 billion in diaspora remittances in 2023. But according to the Central Bank of Nigeria, over 90% of the remittances didn't reach the country. This is curious and interesting, but I will not digress. Remittances to Nigeria um, totaled 20, $0.13 billion in 2022. So it was a bit uh, larger than the 2023 remittances. This was a 3.59% uh, increase from 2021. And it's equivalent to approximately 4.3% of Nigeria's GDP. The Nigerian diaspora is highly educated and influential. It's a great untapped asset. This diaspora has great potential to positively impact Nigeria's national development, but the country is oblivious or is it disinterested? Even if the diaspora does not fit these stellar categories, they deserve to vote, in my humble opinion. So legalizing diaspora voting has the following benefits. It would promote political inclusivity, which is the essence of democracy. It would increase voter participation, another thing that is essential to democracy. It would also enhance, in my opinion, 
Nigeria's political and socioeconomic development. So, by empowering Nigerians in the diaspora through the legal framework and infrastructure that would enabling, uh, enable them to vote, they can play a more active role in conflict resolution, in peace building, and in overall nation building efforts. The problem here is that all attempts thus far to institute diaspora voting have failed. The legal prospects of diaspora voting in Nigeria are limited by the residency requirements required, outlined in the constitution and in the electoral act. The Nigerian constitution, although it guarantees protection against discrimination on grounds, including on grounds of place of origin, does not allow citizens who are residing outside of Nigeria to vote in elections. Sections 77.2 of and 117 two of the constitution specify that voters must be resident in their electoral constituency in order to register and to vote. Similarly, the electoral act requires voters to be ordinarily resident, work in or originate from the local government or ward covered by the registration center. This residency requirement poses a significant challenge to diaspora voting rights. For diaspora Nigerians to vote, they must physically go to Nigeria to do so. This is absurd. It is not only inconvenient and costly it is undemocratic because one, it places significant limitations on the right to vote. Two, it is a denial of fundamental human rights. And three, it is a denial of constitutional rights. The problem is that section 77, two, of the 1999 constitution states that the Niger that Nigerian citizens who are at least 18 years old and living in Nigeria when voters are registered for a legislative election are eligible to register for vote for voting in that election this provision ensures that Nigerian citizens can participate in electing members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Section 117.2 of the 1999 Constitution states that each constituency established in accordance with the Constitution must return one member who is directly elected to the House of Assembly. The National Assembly may pre prescribe how this election is conducted. But if we now put the roadblock in front of the diaspora that you have to physically go to Nigeria to register and then physically also go to Nigeria to vote, this is an impediment to Nigerians in diaspora having the ability to participate uh, in a way that is similar to the ability of Nigerians who are resident in country. So what is the justification for diaspora voting? There's a very strong justification in the international conventions that Nigeria is signatory to, which then effectively are parts of Nigeria's law that say 
that it is valid for diaspora voting rights to be exercised. So here are some examples. The International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers, 1990, explicitly provides for the right of migrant workers and their family members. It says that migrant workers and family members shall have the right to participate in, public, in the public affairs of their state of origin and to vote as well as be elected at local elections of that state in accordance with its legislation. The states concerned, it says, shall as appropriate and in accordance with their legislation facilitate the exercise of these rights. Article 21 of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, UDHR, provides as follows. Everyone has the right to take part in the government of his country directly or through freely chosen representatives. Everyone has the right of equal access to public access in his country. This is from 1948, Article 21, Paragraph 2. Article 13 of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights provides as follows. Every citizen shall have the right to participate freely in the government of his country, either directly through freely chosen representatives in accordance with the provisions of the law. Every citizen shall have the right of equal access to the public services of the country. This is from 1981 and it's Article 13, Paragraph 1. Now, there's also Article 25 of the International Convention, Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR. It provides that every citizen shall have the right and the opportunity without any of the distinctions mentioned in Article 2, without unreasonable restrictions, A, to take part in the conduct of public affairs directly or through freely chosen representatives, B, to vote and to be elected at genuine periodic elections, which shall be by universal and equal suffrage and shall be held by secret ballot, guaranteeing the free expression of the will of the electors. C, to have access on general terms of equality to public service in his country. This is from 1966. And um, so diaspora voting allows citizens living outside their home country to participate in national elections from foreign territories. Diaspora voting is a means of political participation for citizens living abroad. Diaspora voting has become a standard norm in the international system. It is constitutional. It's even a basic fundamental human right. And over 100 countries have diaspora and voting. The question is, why not Nigeria? Well, all the attempted solutions to facilitate diaspora voting have thus far failed. There were initial attempts to enfranchise diaspora voters in 2009. These faced challenges due to the constitutional limitations that restrict voting rights to citizens physically present in the country during 
both registration and elections. Subsequent bills to amend the Electoral Act of 2010 met with resistance and criticism uh, for lacking specificity on election types, voting methods, and diaspora preconditions. So there's a need for constitutional amendments to align with proposed diaspora voting system. And this has been emphasized by various stakeholders, including the electoral managing management body, INEC, and various diaspora organizations and some politicians, including um, Honorable Abike Dabiri. The new bill that was introduced in 2020 aimed to amend key sections of the constitution to enable diaspora voting and it's also set out eligibility criteria such as age, residency requirements, and possession of a valid Nigerian passport. The bill addressed some of the constitutional hurdles, but there are questions remaining regarding the scope of diaspora participation in elections, voting procedures, and dispute resolution mechanisms. Further revisions to the Electoral Act are necessary to clarify these aspects and ensure that there is a framework for diaspora voting in Nigeria that is fit for purpose. Why do we need diaspora voting, I ask again? Well, all Nigerians who meet the age requirements have the constitutional right to vote. The diaspora, uh, you know, the estimate of the size of the diaspora is very um, disparate. So some say it's 15 million, some say it's 17 million. There are other estimates that are lower than this. But regardless of what the estimates are, there's agreement that there's a sizable diaspora population. And to exclude it from voting is the denial of rights to a large number of citizens. It's undemocratic to exclude the diaspora from voting. They are Nigerian citizens. Nigeria allows for dual citizenship. Many diaspora Nigerians are dual citizens and, you know, they can vote in their country of residence. Why can't they vote in their country of origin, you know, while living in diaspora? Why should they have to travel to Nigeria to vote? Nigeria is an outlier and 100 countries, as I said before, allow diaspora voting. 40 of them, at least 40, are African. On this important matter, Nigeria seems determined to carry last, and this is most unfortunate. The diaspora sends significant remittances, as I've also said before, without which the Nigerian economy would be in worse shape than it is. Numerous Nigerians who live in the country are dependent on these remittances for survival and for employment. It is unjust to deny citizens on whom the country depends their constitutional rights. And it is also unjust to impose um, onerous conditions on them just to be able to exercise their franchise. Many Nigerians in diaspora don't only make significant remittances, they maintain cultural 
ethnic and historical ties that put Nigeria in good stead. Only engaging with this community in remittance-driven agenda is highly exploitative and greatly disrespectful. It will alienate the diaspora and discourage deeper interest in politics and also potential benefits of such engagement, creating a legal framework that normalizes diaspora voting is imperative. The potential impact of diaspora voting on the political landscape of Nigeria is transformative. Since it has implications for electoral rep outcomes, representation, and the overall democratic governance, of the country. The benefits and challenges of Nigerian diaspora voting are, have been you know, talked about extensively, and I'm going to enumerate some of them. It's important to ensure the political inclusion of Nigerian citizens resident outside the country who desire to maintain their connection to the democratic processes of their homeland. But there are, so we have many potential benefits, but also challenges associated with diaspora voting within the Nigerian electoral system. But we should admit that there are you know, significant and legal as well as logistical complexities involved in implementing diaspora voting. Some of these include how to manage voter registration, how to do verification, and the security as well as the integrity of the electoral process. So, it is imperative, like I said before, to incorporate diaspora voting into the democratic framework. We need a nuanced and inclusive approach to policy making that takes into account the perspectives and interests of the Nigerian diaspora community, as I've said before. We must also address the legal, logistical, and political considerations associated with sound implementation of diaspora voting. For so long, we've heard the various administrations in collaboration with relevant stakeholders say that they're working towards diaspora voting rights, which could empower millions of diaspora Nigerians to participate in elections and contribute to the strengthening of democratic legitimacy in Nigeria. INEC has also expressed several times that it agrees that there should be Nigerian diaspora voting. Why has it not happened? This is because there are contradictions in electoral laws, the residency requirements that I've mentioned, and then also lack of political will. And, you know, um, there are apprehensions about the cost and also logistics. Some of the contradictions that stand in the way of diaspora voting <clears throat> are the following. One, the legal prospects of diaspora voting in Nigeria are limited, I'm repeating again, by the residency requirements outlined in the Constitution and the Electoral Act. While the Nigerian Constitution guarantees protection against discrimination, including on grounds of place of origin, the current laws clearly stipulate that only citizens resident in Nigeria are entitled to vote in elections. Section 77 2 and 117 2 
of the constitution specify that voters must be resident in the electoral constituency to register and vote. Similarly, the Electoral Act requires voters to be ordinarily resident, work in or originate from the local government or ward covered by the registration center. This residency requirement poses significant challenge to diaspora voting rights. So the challenges, the legal prospects of diaspora voting present several challenges, particularly those I've mentioned several times regarding residency requirements, cost benefit analysis, and logistical issues. The problem with the current laws are the following. Only those physically present within the country can register as voters or participate in elections. This effectively disenfranchises Nigerians living abroad. Political considerations um, are also in play because people are weighing potential benefits uh, against the costs involved and they are afraid about costs. There are also logistical challenges and lack of institutional capacity by the election management body, INEC. There's lack of reliable data on the exact statistics of diaspora populations. There's also a need to establish polling units in foreign countries. And there's the very significant matter of electoral integrity. Nonetheless, diaspora voting rights are important. Okay, so what we have is paradoxical rhetorical recognition of the importance of diaspora voting rights and the reality of the non-availability of the right of the diaspora to vote. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, acknowledges the significant contributions of Nigerians living abroad to the economy and believes that they should have the right to vote and participate in the country's affairs. Obstacles notwithstanding, the potential benefits of diaspora voting align with global best practices. And if facilitated, it could enhance democratic engagement as well as economic development in Nigeria. I've said this before, I'm repeating it for emphasis. So what is to be done? There's need for a constitutional amendment to create a legal framework. Beyond that, there's need to effectively implement this amendment once passed as law. Also, there's need for sound design of the institutional framework that would do the implementation. So we need to build the capacity of INEC, the electoral management body, to implement the law once it's passed. There's also need for effective and transparent and reliable voter registration, verification, and the management of diaspora voting in a manner that respects electoral integrity and builds confidence in the system. Now, here's the problem. If INEC cannot manage elections in Nigeria in a way that inspires confidence, what is the guarantee that it can do so for the diaspora? So 
Here are the things we need. I'm going to quickly en enumerate them. We need to amend the Electoral Act to allow for electronic or online and mail-in voting, advanced voting, and in-person voting. These are done by other countries that are smaller and have fewer resources than Nigeria. So why not Nigeria? There's also a need to clarify the residency requirements for Nigerians in diaspora, including eligibility criteria for different types of citizens. Okay, so the people who are dual citizens, permanent residents, and even undocumented immigrants in the countries where they are. There's need also to designate polling stations in um, the locations abroad. And there's no reason why Nigerian embassies and consulates could not be um, polling stations. For these purposes. There's a need to allow absentee voting as an option. There's also a need to clarify the calculation of residency periods in Nigeria for diaspora citizens. There's a need to specify approved designated places for voting and to make this information widely available and known to people in diaspora. Also, there's need to address concerns about security and data breaches in online voting channels. There's need to evaluate the cost effectiveness of, of e-voting um, you know, for Nigeria. There's also a need to ensure that the legal framework is implemented effectively to minimize potential litigations from elect people who lose elections. Now, one really big thing is that the election management body must be overhauled to inspire confidence in election results. Nigerian elections have not demonstrated any appreciable electoral integrity thus far. So, you know, building trust and showing that INEC is up to the task is one of the real serious challenges that we face. So, finally, I want to say that diasporan voting is an imperative and the time is now to make it happen. No reason why Nigeria is carrying last in this respect. Thank you very much.